Okay, so we're going to look at some complex analysis and we're going to find the residues of this function here, tangent z divided by z to the power of 4 minus 1. z is a complex variable of a plus bi, so z equals a plus bi and i equals square root of minus 1. So normal business for complex analysis. Okay, so when we're looking for the residues, we need to find the poles. So to find the poles of this, we need to find out when this denominator is going to be zero. We're not going to worry about the numerator just, just yet. So what we're looking for is when z to the power of 4 minus 1 equals zero. So usual business, z to the 4 equals 1. So now we need to solve this. So we know that 1 to the power of 4, that equals 1. So that's one solution. We also know that minus 1 to the power of 4, that is also 1. So minus 1 squared gives us positive 1. Square that again, you're left with 1. And then as we're dealing with complex analysis, we need to consider the terms involving i as well. So we also know that i um, squared equals minus 1. So it's the square root of minus 1. So I'll just write that in a different way square root of minus 1 squared, we just removed the square root sign, that is minus 1. And we also know that minus 1 squared is also 1. So we can say that i is also a solution. But as it's raised to the power of 4, there should be 4 solutions. So what about minus square root of minus 1, i.e. minus i. So if we square that, we end up with positive 1, and then square that again, we're also left with 1. So therefore, we've got four simple poles. So four simple poles at z equals 1, z equals minus 1, let's just write a positive there, z equals negative i, and z equals positive i. Okay, so we've found that part. Next problem is we've got z to the power of 4 minus 1. Now we need to break this up into its factors. So as we've got this broken down, which is the solutions, we can do that pretty easy. So f of z equals tangent of z. Numerator, we're not worried about just yet. We need to break this down into a kind of form where we can do the residues. So that gives us z plus 1, z minus 1, z plus i, and z minus i. So now we're in a position now where we can find the residues of this function, and now we just need to find out each of these values. So first of all, let's find the residue at z equals 1. So residue of f at 1. So all we're going to do now is plug in 1 into this function where we see a z. So we get tangent 1. Plug in a 1 here, we get z plus 1, so that's 1 plus 1, so I'm just going to write a 2. This is the one we want to disappear because that's going to be our pole. So there, 1 minus 1 is 0, so we leave that for now. Z plus i gives us 1 plus i, and Z minus i gives us 1 minus i. Okay, so 2 times this times this, and that's going to be our first residue. Let's just work out 1 plus i times 1 minus i. So 1 plus i, 1 minus i. So... Back in good old elementary maths, we just foil it. So 1 times 1, so that's this one. That's just going to give us 1. Then 1 times minus i gives us minus i. So that's this one. Now we distribute the i. So the i times 1 gives us positive i. So that's going to cancel out. I now distribute this with this i plus i times minus i, that's going to give us positive 1. 
So therefore this is going to give us two because these will cross out. So therefore we're left with this just becomes two. So our first residue is going to be tangent at one divided by four. Two times two is four. So that equals, let's just write that down, tangent of one divided by four. Okay, that takes care of that. So now the residue of F at minus one. So all we're going to do now is plug in minus one for all of these functions. So now we're going to get tangent of minus one. Just put that in brackets so the minus sign doesn't confuse us. Again, minus one into all of these, just as we did here. So minus one and plus one, that's going to give us zero. So that's one of our poles. So we eliminate that one. So minus one minus one gives us minus two. Minus one plus i, minus one minus i. Let's just write that in there. And then minus one minus i. So if we plug this in to this formula here, let's just do that again. Minus one minus i, minus one plus i. Again, let's just foil it out as we did before. So we go with this one and this one first. So minus one times minus one plus one. Minus one times plus i gives us minus i. And now distribute the i. So minus i times minus one gives us positive i. And minus i times plus i gives us a positive one. So that's positive one. So again, this is going to equal two. So they're basically the same uh, value in those two functions. So again, we can just change this for a two. Okay, tangent of minus one. Now this looks a little bit ugly. I'm not too keen on that. So we can do a trig identity. So we know that tangent is an odd function. So what we can say is tangent of minus z, this is equal to minus tangent of z. So now we can just change that now to being equal to minus tangent of, so the minus one becomes just the one, so minus tangent of one, divided by minus two times two, which is minus four. And now we can do now in minus and the minus, we can just cancel these out. And then we're left with the same residue as we was here. Let's put that one in brackets as well so it's, it's clear. Let's just rewrite that a little bit better. So tangent at one. Okay, so these two residues are now equal. So now let's go on to the i. So let's find the residue of i. Residue of f at i. So same business as before, plug in i for all these functions, tangent of i. Okay, so we're going to come on to that in a little minute, that's going to bring us on to a hyperbolic tangent. And then plug in i for all of this, so we're left with i plus 1, i minus 1, so looking very similar to what we've got here. And then i plus i gives us 2i. Then i minus i is zero, that's our pole, so we eliminate that from our calculation. Okay, so let's calculate this out. So here we need to calculate this one. So let's just do that over this side. i plus one, i minus one. So if we foil these out, we're gonna get i squared, which is minus one. i times minus one is minus i. Now we foil the one. So 1 with i is plus i, and plus 1 and minus i, multiply those together, we get, sorry, plus 1 and minus 1, we get minus 1. So this is equal to negative 2. So that equals negative 2. So now we've got a negative 2 here, and multiplied by 2i. So that's going to give us minus 4i in the denominator. Tangent i we need a trig identity for that one. So I'm just going to write that in here. 
tangent of i now that's going to give us i times hyperbolic tangent of one so that is the same as that so now i'm going to plug that in into the uh, into the numerator so we've got i hyperbolic tangent of one okay so a little bit of cancelling out here we can do here now we can cancel out the i's and that's just going to leave us now with minus tangent of one minus hyperbolic tangent of one divided by four so it's going to write that here minus hyperbolic tangent of one divided by four okay now we need to find the residue of minus i so the residue of f at minus i same business, plugging minus i into all these functions. Tangent of minus i, and then minus i plus one, minus i minus one, minus i plus i zero, so that's our pole, and then minus i minus i minus two i. Okay, minus one, plus i minus one minus i is going to be the same value as this function here so this is going to give us minus two okay what about tangent of minus i well tan we know tangent of minus z is minus tangent of z so then what we could do is using our hyperbolic identity we can call that minus hyperbolic tangent at one okay and then minus two times minus two i gives us positive four i so i missed the i out in the front of here minus i and then so minus i and i the i's will cancel out so then that will just leave us with minus hyperbolic tangent at one divided by four and that's going to give us our four residues of our function and then this one is here and then this one is here actually this one i'm not going to declare that one as the correct answer i'm going to declare this one here a further look at this one Okay, 